Hey there guys, uh, today I'm heading out to the food forest, I need to do some general just looking after bits and bobs in there and I'm going to take these babies out. These are catmint, they have been overwintering, just taken from little cuttings uh, last year and I am going to pop them out by my blueberries because if you watched my previous video we had some damage on those babies. Um, I potted up what was left of the bits that had been chewed off and um, hopefully at least one of those will take and I'll be able to propagate those. I'm not entirely sure what caused the damage, but I'm thinking probably rabbits. It's all quite close to the floor. Uh, we'll see. But supposedly, both rabbits, deer, voles, all things we probably have here. Um, definitely rabbits and voles. Uh, they apparently, they don't like catmint. So I'm going to throw some of these out there and hope that they do a bit of work on repelling. Cats are supposed to love it, but I don't see any cats around here except my own. And if they want to go down there and roll around in my catmint, they can go nuts. Okay, let's grab these. Right, so we've come out of our little food forest in the making. So here in the foreground, you can see one of the blueberry bushes that has a bit of damage. The one behind it, which you may not be able to see, well, that's because it barely exists anymore. Uh, it got chewed right down to the stump, so I think it's unlikely that that one will make it back. But hopefully one of those cuttings will take at least and we'll be able to replace it. And I'm going to look after these better. So while I'm digging away a bit of this grass to pop this cat mint in, uh, let's talk for a minute about permaculture cardinal sin that I am committing here and it, it's all this bare earth you can see this field is mostly grass with all the usual weeds you'd expect from where we are so nettles docks ragwort dandelions etc etc um I've been, as I've been planting the trees and bushes out here I've just been removing any area of grass and weeds as needed um and most of the time I've been mulching over the area where I've removed the grass with some old grass clippings or some hedge trimmings or some wood shavings but obviously I have dropped the ball here and we have this big bit of exposed earth. I'm thinking I need to start working with living mulch so I've got lots and lots of white clover growing on the property um, so I may well start using the bits that are sort of creeping onto my paths out by the house and propagate those and bring them over here and fill in the space that's on show. That way I can cover this bare earth and provide a bit of protection for the soil, hopefully compete against the grass from just coming straight back in. And it's a nitrogen fixer, so we can do some chop and dropping later in the season and add all that goodness back into this soil. It's also just so plentiful here that realistically when I want the space for something else, then I can just move it aside and it's, it's no harm done. We do have moles here as evidenced by all the molehills popping up all over the property um, but I will take the gift that is a little mound of freshly dug dirt to fill in a hole as and when I need which is what I'm doing here. So I still do need to put some kind of protection literally around these, a barrier to stop things getting directly at them. Um, that's next on my list. I'm just waiting. And if you can see the chicken coop in the background, we're just putting the wire onto it now. And then as soon as that's done and we've got some off cuts, I'm going to use that to go around these. Um, you might notice that I'm literally just taking the grass out as I need to. Um, I've decided that in this space, I am literally just going to, there's a lot of grass, there's a lot of weeds. There's a lot of all sorts of things growing here. And I've decided that until it's causing me a problem, I'm just going to leave it um, and not try and fight that battle until I need the space because otherwise you end up putting all the effort in to get rid of the grass and the weeds and unless you use it straight away it all just comes back in and you have to have the same battle over and over again. I am just taking the grass out as I need to um, and hopefully gradually over time there'll be less and less grass in here and more and more productive plants um, but it's bit by bit. Here's a little sneak peek on how the chicken coop and run are looking. Mm. I've just been out here working on it today. Ain't it beautiful? Hey 
Hey guys, so I've got about 20 minutes today and I thought I would use it to head down to the food forest and get some bits out there into the ground that I've been talking about doing for a while but just haven't had that moment to go and do it yet. So, uh, I've been prompted to do this. My blueberry bushes that had been eaten by something, can't be sure what, but I think I'm going to assume rabbits. Potted up those cuttings uh, and then fingers crossed at least one of them takes and we can replace at least one of those bushes. I think the other one might survive, there's enough left of it, but one of them has been just completely taken down to the base. But anyway, that got me thinking about, this is my first opportunity to actually react to this food forest, to actually work in that organic way that is the dream of a food forest and recognize a problem that my plant has and respond to it by planting something close to it around it that's actually going to help with that problem. Um, so if I'm going to assume that it was rabbits, it I could have been deer, uh, either way I need to start thinking about what can I put near, if say we're talking about berry bushes at the moment, what can I put near them to actually help deter a rabbit from coming along and having a chew on it. And the beauty is, is that I've already got some of these things just sitting in pots in my cold frames just waiting for the for the space to go out so i have got some perennial leeks i've got some walking egyptian onions and i've got some welsh onions um, that are nearly ready onions have quite a good reputation for deterring pests they smell quite strong they mask the smell of something that would be attractive to a pest i've also got catmint i put that out on the previous video because that is also supposed to deter you know these are the things i'm starting to think they have a purpose in this food forest they can help my berry bushes get to a point where they might be able to give me food and the beauty is that a lot of these things have their own harvest so this is agroforestry coming to life so here's a peek at the blueberry cuttings that, that were left unceremoniously dumped on the ground and look, this is alive, right? I'm not sure how I know if it's gonna, if it's taken root. I will just probably have to wait and see, but I'm gonna have to check back on the previous video and see if these little buds were on here. But I'm pretty sure they're alive. So, it might actually have been a blessing in disguise that I have now taken cuttings and propagated these blueberry bushes instead of one. We might have a few that make it out of those, so that's cool. I'll leave these here for now. The reason they're this side of the stables is that the wind comes across this way, so this is just sheltering them for now while they're in a bit of a tender state. These are the Egyptian onions, don't they look good? I've taken a brief stop off to have a little check on my rhubarb. He was looking a bit sorry for himself um, when I first put him out here. But he's putting out new leaves, I'll show you. So these are the old leaves that look a bit sad, but it is putting out these new ones, so fingers crossed. Look at this. <laughs> Already got full blown seed heads on my dandelion. Crazy. Now, if I were a super tidy gardener who wanted a perfectly manicured lawn with nothing but beautiful grass, that would be a problem. But thankfully, I am not. Dandelion's pretty much the only thing in flower around here at the moment, that and the gorse, so providing a valuable service for us. The poor remains. terrible accident and my edging tool is no more. Apparently that was too much, too much heavy duty he is. And they would never lie to me would they? Uh, oh well, we'll find a new handle for that. So we're back to the trusty old shovel. So 
we're fighting a slow, gradual battle against the grass in this field, it's going to have to be uh, one that I work on as I go, because otherwise it's just too big a job to get rid of all of this grass. You know, I need something to be there to be competing with it in order for it not to just grow back in. So basically, whenever I'm planting something, I'm just trying to turn the grass over around the area where I'm planting um, and then just leave it in place and then I'm just filling the hole around the plant itself with either some compost or some dirt from a molehill or something like that. Okay, so I have an upcoming video where I'm going to chat about my planned guilds for this food forest. And now when I say planned guilds, if the blueberry situation has shown us anything, it's that we've got to adapt when things happen. Um, and you can't really predict the interactions that everything's going to have. So we do just have to be adaptable. But that being said, you do need a starting point. So I'm going to have a chat with you soon about that starting point because we've got the fruit trees in now. What's going around them? What's going to make it a food forest rather than just a traditional orchard with grass and trees? But this is the makings of it. So here, behind me this way, I've got two berry bushes. Ooh, one's a white currant and one is a gooseberry. And this here is an apple tree. And standing right in between is where I'm about to put this perennial leek. What I'm hoping that walking onion does for my blueberries is to mask the scent of it from the rabbits that are going to want to come and eat it before I get a chance to get any fruit. And then it come out of the wind. Hang on. Okay, I'm just hiding in the nearly built chicken run. I think it would be so easy to overcomplicate the idea of a food forest. There's so many things to think about, so many interactions, there's guilds, what are all the layers, what are all the things you have to check a box for, that actually you lose sight of the simplicity of it really. You think what can a plant do for another plant? Well in this case a plant can deter a pest. It's not difficult to make the jump then to something that will attract something that they do want, like pollinators. And then you think, what else do plants really want? They want a certain environment. So if they want it to be not windy, maybe another plant can provide that windbreak. If they want it to be shaded, maybe another plant can provide that shade. Or they might want nutrients. Nitrogen fixing plants being the most well known. If something is a heavy feeder of nitrogen, planting it next to something that fixes nitrogen that you can chop and drop just makes perfect sense. So I think these things are quite simple. My brain likes that. Uh, I'm sure I will delve into the science of it at some point because I am a little bit nerdy. But for now, at this stage, I think I really just need to keep it simple. And the simple things are what is it lacking and how can a plant give it? And if it can, stick that plant next to it. So that's what I'm doing. So the walking onions and this perennial leek I purchased from the Agroforestry Research Trust. Um, I've tried to only buy started plants of things that I can't really start myself from seed. Uh, so I've got a lot of Welsh onions to grow in this food forest, which I have started from seed, purely because I could find the seeds from a reputable supplier. So those are tiny at the moment, but that's okay, because it won't take long for them to catch up. These walking onions and perennial leek, while they're a bit further along, I've only got one pot of each, so I'll have to let them establish for at least a season before I then go on and propagate them. So I had to dig out a bit of the ground around that chicken coop in order to bury the wire deep enough so that foxes and things can't get underneath it. So that's where I'm bringing this dirt over from. Since I'd already dug it up, I thought it was a good use of some loose soil just to fill in around where I've dug the grass away from these onions. Then I'm just grabbing some old dried out grass clippings from last year that were just left on the side of this field just to pop over this exposed bit of earth as a mulch. It may not be the best mulch in the world but it's here so I'm going to use what I've got. Oh, okay, that is a great job done and it took me less than 20 minutes. Uh, these are these are the agroforestry moments, aren't they? The days when we go out there and we plant 10 fruit trees, they're the sexy moments. They feel big and monumental, but these ones where you just notice something that's missing from a system, it's not a system yet, but you know what I mean. Where you just, there's a, there's a problem that you recognize and you take a step to, to provide a, a solution for that problem, a natural solution for that problem. I guess those are the moments, so yeah, that's cool. Right, I've got no more life to get on with, but I just wanted to share that with you, so thanks guys. I've got a bit more of a planned video coming um, with regards to the fruit guilds and how I'm planning all of that. 
but I just thought this was a real life moment that I thought would be nice to share with you. So uh, thank you for coming along. Cheers guys.